morning, everyone. Our boat club checks are starting. When we were at the boat show, a lady that Debs knows from the Women Who Sail group on Facebook came by and she said, hey, I've got some little pieces of teak. I'll be happy to make one of those. So she took one of the pieces that came out of it that was loose. And she, <laughs> while we were out on vacation a couple weeks ago, she brought over this little Tupperware bin. It's so nice. Little Tupperware bin with a thing that said parquet floor pieces for repair and a nice little note and a little block of sandpaper. Like she set it us up completely. So thank you, Francis. This is awesome. You sanded away over there? I am. <laughs> she even provided little pieces of sandpaper. Yeah, I'm just sanding some of the edges where they're just um, a little bit too high. Which she said in her note they might be. She just gave us a little bit of room to play with because each piece was in a different size. So. Thanks again, Francis. This is awesome. Thanks, Francis. <laughs> All right. There's the spot we're repairing, right there. Oh, and we've got one little spot right over there, too. Do you want to put the pieces of wood down on top of the glue? Yeah. All right, come on in. We're about to do it. Okay. Now can you push this one right in there like that? Yeah. Okay. Push it down. Okay, don't touch the glue. Okay, perfect. Now this one has to go right in here. Now, hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll just touch the top of the wood on. There, can you push down that side? <laughs> Good job. All right. Now, oops. Now this one needs to go right in here. Good job. And this one goes right in here. You want to do it? You would make an excellent Tetris player. And then how about this one right in there? Push it down real hard. That one's going to be a little tough because it's the last go. piece. All right. Now can you stand on it? Stand right on the corner. And put one foot right across all these and one foot on that one. There you go. One foot there. Perfect. Okay. You're gonna be glued to the floor. Bye. You'll have to stand there for four days. Can you wait until it's dry for four days? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we have our floor repair. So slightly different color. We'll um, sand this all smooth and probably actually, you know what we might do is put a little stain on it just to see if we can get a fairly close match and just blend it. So we'll sand those level and then just sort of fair out or blend out the color. Um, Deb's really good at using stain and blending it with existing um, stain to get, or existing wood to kind of match the color. She does a real good job with that. So anyway, thank you so much, Francis. I like the way this looks. We get them sanded. I'll send you another little picture of it, but we at least got them mixed up and epoxied down. What you got over there? My nerd shirt. Explain. It's Stan Lee and all of his awesome characters that he created. Love me some Stanley. You are such an anti-girl. Like you're an Xbox gamer, you're a comic book fan, and I'm none of those things. I love a hardware store. I hate going to the clothing store. I could spend hours in a hardware store and ten minutes in a clothing store. Alright. So there you have it. But guess what? Well, you go to the hardware store. I'm going to go clothes Duck shopping. with me. <laughs> yes, I am. And I'm Stand back, good. guys. I'm all his. <laughs> <laughs> so the history behind that is every time I would do something dumb, Deb would say, stand back ladies, he's all mine. So that's what that was coming from. <laughs> What did you do? Okay. Sorry. I did not 
you know, in the end, Whitney just lost her footing. Um, it's our biggest fear. Every time we step off the boat, we make sure that we're holding swab when we do. Uh, and frankly, it could happen to any one of us. Deb has been concerned about this just because she doesn't have great knees and she's always worried about this potentially happening. So thankfully, everybody's okay. Um, Whitney certainly had some bruises and it probably startled her a bit. Shockingly, Swab was absolutely fine. And in the video, it looks like such a violent fall where she looks like she kind of fell right onto the, the tow rail and bent backwards. And we lifted up her shirt and she had a little tiny red mark on her back. Within an hour, it was gone. And, you know, she's just fine. As a matter of fact, if you listen, you can hear her, um, you know, Whitney saying, OK, climb up there because Whitney still kind of had her in her arm. And she was hanging on these banger boards that we have that hang from lines to keep the boat from hitting the, the dock. Um, and luckily she landed kind of right on that and, and it was holding her up. Um, I, I always tell people when you're getting on the boat, never step on it because I don't know how secure that thing really is. But it was sufficient to hold her up there um, and keep her from going all the way down into the water. And it also is what prevented McKinley from also going in the water too because once Whitney hit that banger board, she was able to kind of push her up over her shoulder and you notice she said climb on up and, and McKinley climbed up onto the deck of the boat and then when told to go get grandpa, she ran, um, you know, down the boat to go get us. Uh, forgive the video quality. That just happens to be the security cameras we have. And, and it captured all of that. So, you know, we all went back and looked to see if you know, even Whitney was like, I don't even know exactly what happened. Like I took a step and next thing you know, I was going backwards and it wasn't like she tripped or anything, just lost her footing. Uh, you know, again, like it could happen to any one of us. So luckily everybody's OK. We went ahead and let this dry for um, for about 24 hours. We'll do a little sanding on this and prep that for ultimately sanding and varnishing the whole floor. And after drying for several hours, this is the uh, the fared section right up here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and go with 80 grit sandpaper and get that sanded nice and smooth and prepped for interior painting. This is after sanding it down. I know it looks a little odd here, but when you rub your hands on it, it feels Pretty darn smooth with one small exception right there in that little line. And I need to resolve that with a little tiny sanding block by hand. Here's the wall inside of the head. It is fared and sanded smooth. You can see just how unsmooth it was before given the white and pink spots. You can definitely see where it was a little bit ripply for sure. And rather than sand it all the way down and leave the fairing only in the cracks, I've smoothed it a little bit where the pink is. It's a little tall. This is the right approach, but I've run a, a blade up inside of here and between these two pieces of wood all the way over to here. And this is where it was all dry. It started getting wet right around here. So I went beyond it. I also cut through, I also cut through this wood. So I'm going to try and pry this up away from the window and see if I can pull it out from behind this board. I have no idea if that's going to work or not. As soon as I started doing this work, I was worried that there was a chance I might do exactly this. Just crack the window. Damn it. I was able to kind of break those pieces out of there, but I had to actually tear up the fiberglass a little bit and also broke the glass to do it. Right underneath this lip right here is where we did that repair with the 5200. Um, and I think that's actually where it's leaking. So my thought is, the way I want to do this repair is get that stuff cleaned out of there, grind this beveled edge, and essentially re-glass down this. Um, pulling out this window and breaking that wood off the back side of it, I did crack the glass up here a little bit, but I guess I'm not too worried about it. I'm going to have to grind all this down to put the glass right to the edge, and I'll probably run it right to this edge because I can cut it nice and smooth at that edge there. Uh, it's going to be some work for sure. Uh, we're calling it a day, and I'm going to cover this up with a piece of closed cell foam and some tape just to make sure the cats don't get out and if we get a rain it doesn't get a there's our high class window covering uh, at least this way you can start to get a sense for what we've done here so you can see here where we pulled out the old wood right from behind that beam where it was up against the wall. I believe right behind this horizontal beam is actually where it's leaking on the outside. So I went ahead and pried through it and cut through a little bit of the glass on the outside. And, you know, I'm going to have to do a lot of grind and essentially re-glass this outer part of the boat. Now we got filmmaker and film subject because she's helping clean up the mess. She's got the shop back and... 
She's working her stuff. <laughs> and prom parental unit over there, making sure she's doing a good job. Hey, wait a minute, I'm shooting you. My lovely bride has been very busy over here. Just to give you an idea how busy. It's interesting. This front two sections look like a seat. This looks like a varied species. I actually think the varied species look a little better. Now she's working on the panels over the engine compartment. Hi. What you been doing? I have been sanding all day. I did not get as much done as I was thinking I would do. Um, a couple spots over here were in trouble. Looks good though. And then this over here has some film on it, which I think you're right, might be epoxy, which is a bitch. Yeah, epoxy is really hard. To sand down. And I was sore from holding the palm sander. And I'm tired. Good Tuesday, everybody. I came down on the boat. Deb has been busy doing work down here, and I want to show you just how much progress she made sanding the parquet floor. Um, she sanded the banisters, uh, a little bit of the fairing that I had put up the other day because I forgot to sand one section, and she even put the first coat of paint on one of them. So, yeah, we're making a little bit of progress here for sure. Uh, I'm impressed with how much work she's done. I am about to go put a flap disc on and go outside and sand uh, the fiberglass in this little cove piece where I took out the port yesterday. And we'll see how that looks too. So over here on the floor, everything where she didn't already do in this section right here, she sanded all the way down to bare wood. It is interesting. You can see all the way up along that forward edge where it looks like it's just plain teak. It must've been replaced over there. And then the rest of the parquet floor appears to be different cuts of wood, which I think really looks kind of interesting. Um, but she's kind of gone all the way along this, all the way up to the back stateroom, along in front of the companionway steps. Let me step up on the step here a little bit and look down, um, and is just about done short of this section right here around these um, the hardware. So she'll have to pull the hardware off and sand that as well. So yeah, this is looking great, great. I can't wait to have it refinished and have the rest of it look like this section under the table. That was our test area right there. You may remember the other day, I thought I was gonna come in here and just replace a piece of the bulkhead in this area. What I found was right up here between the layers of the inner core and the outer teak plank that we had skinned over with fiberglass, it was moist. So I've pulled this all apart. Um, you can see where I've cut it up here. Let me get a little closer. So I went ahead and moved the uh, the core, essentially the three quarter inch plywood and the hardwood that was over it. Uh, and I exposed this horizontal teak plank that used to be the exterior of the coach house. You can even see the black adhesive that it was held onto the, onto the surface with. Um, remember we've skinned over that with fiberglass on the backside, but this gives me a nice area here to replace this. Before I do though, I want to know why it was moist up inside of here. Um, and that's where I'm about to go outside and sand, where I sealed that with 5200 with the boat yard earlier in the year, and then I'll be able to glass over that. Uh, painting an exterior is not going to be my specialty. I just know I'm not that good at detail work, so I'm certainly going to have to uh, arrange to have somebody come paint that. Probably the same yard, right? I'll just go to Michael and ask him to come do this small piece that I work on here. <laughs> believe this shit? I really don't believe I see you grinding all that fresh paint off. This is Whitney. She's embarrassed. So it's three days later and she still has pretty good bruises on her arm where she fell. I needed to grind this thing down. Uh, uh, ground it down where it was fared. And now I got to get some of this sealant out of here. I can show this. You can see it okay. That's the bottom side, and there's actually a groove that has the 5200 in it. I think I'm going to try and clean that out and, and really glass it back up. I tried the inexpensive route, and based on results, I need to work on it again. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
So you just saw at the very end of that clip, I ran into a soft spot here and I think I might have found my culprit. So I stopped and you can see I peeled the 5200 out of that and what I was pulling out was wet core. Um, it's definitely wet in there. What's interesting is I don't think this is coming from anywhere other than right here. So I don't know if it was in there from before or what, but this is an area I got to clean out, let it dry a little bit, but I think I found the spot where the water was coming in. It's right behind the edge of that bulkhead just to the aft side of what I showed on the interior of this port. Well, finding that was more than just a little bit depressing, but I think at this point I'm going to end today's video. I have a little bit more sanding and cleaning up to do, and then ultimately I will end up having to prep this surface and glass it. And um, you've seen my fairing work in previous videos. It's not great, so I'm going to see how well I can do this, and hopefully I can do it good enough that I don't need to hire the yard to do the new fairing. So with that, bye, y'all. Safe sailing, and we'll see you next Friday.